none of us are ever going to die. That's not going to happen, of course. We'll just but go up into the cloud. We might go up into the cloud. <laughs> so if that happens, how do our children get access to our information? Ooh, that is a good topic. Hi, I'm Lynn Widmeyer, and if you're like me, you spend a lot of time on your computer. And it's very reassuring for me to know that all my data, all my files, all my pictures, all my writings are safe and secure in the cloud. But what I don't know is, what is the cloud? How big is it? I mean, it's got to be huge because it's got all this information in it, so no wonder it's in the stratosphere. Where is it? Who runs it? Who manages it? So who better to explain this mystery to us than John Maxey? He's the co-owner and president of Data Direct here in Charlestown, West Virginia. So John, before we get started as to what is the cloud, just say a few words about Data Direct. We've been in business now for, this is our 43rd year, going on 44. Ooh, terrific. My goal when it was originally founded back in 1981, was to create a business that could provide employment in my home state of West Virginia. Because you are a West Virginia native. I am a West Virginia native. At the time, the infrastructure wasn't present. There wasn't enough broadband to allow people to work in the Eastern Panhandle and transmit data back into Washington, D.C. in the larger market. So we had to uh, base in originally Damascus, Maryland, and then Monrovia and Mount Airy, Maryland. But slowly you're moving. As the technology <laughs> increased and our bandwidth increased, it allowed us to move into the state. And uh, we now reside in Jefferson County, and I'm just as happy as I can be to be here. Well, and we're as happy as can be that we have an employer here <laughs> that is committed to staying and doing great work. So let's jump into what the heck is the cloud? You know, there are a lot of different ways of looking at it. Um, in one respect, the cloud is a marketing concept that allows giant tech companies to take money out of your bank account every year. <laughs> oh, and so, they're so good at <laughs> that. They are very good at that. Um, so that's, that's one, uh, you know, one way of looking at it. But the cloud actually is defined by NIST. There's a very specific definition of what constitutes now that's the national institute of standards, standards and, and technology. technology since we're getting older that's the old bureau of standards i remember it well that Absolutely. big tall building but uh nist provides definitions of things you know, including time units and everything we can imagine and they define the cloud and by the nist definition there's really only one true cloud provider in the world and that's oh. amazon amazon web oh, services really and that's because under the formal definition of a cloud, it's required that it be um, completely flexible as to use and that the payment also be flexible. So you only pay for the, the tiny little units that you're using at any time. And Amazon is the only provider that currently meets that formal definition. Oh, now there are other providers that are now calling themselves cloud services and people you know, commonly refer to them as cloud services that just flat fee, they, they bill you a flat dollar amount every and month regardless of your use and you use that service. And though the biggest of those include um, Google. Well, now you see, now you're getting into an area that um, is confusing is that I always thought that the cloud was one big cloud, but but it, no. it but it isn't. There are different people in the cloud, like there are different clouds, like Cumulus and Amazon. There are lots of different clouds. <laughs> And really, if you, anybody who goes shopping in Northern Virginia has been through Sterling and you see these giant fields of warehouses with buildings that have no, no windows, there are uh, no windows. And it's not because they're keeping the, uh, the computer programmers prisoner, which they used to do. <laughs> they used to keep us all in the basement back in the day, but they, they now let us out. They had to knock three times yeah, to get yeah. out. But um, the, what those are is, is cloud storage you know, providers. They're, they're warehouses full of computers and disk drives. Well, now you see that, that's so discouraging to me because I, I had this image of the cloud as just being this wonderful, amorphous, <laughs> cloud-like thing floating in the air with, you know, and, and to find out that really it has it's just it's computers. It's just a computer, sort yeah. of. It's a whole bunch of computers. Image. Like if you go in one of those buildings, there are just rack upon rack upon rack 
of computers. Um, and it is, it is very cloud-like in that those computer um, facilities, these data warehouses, are all interconnected so that... Um, and like around the world? Around the world, around all around the world. the world. You can run, but you cannot hide. You cannot hide. So your data, um, like I tend to use uh, Amazon's East uh, facility, which is the one we see when we drive out Route 7, but our data is not just at that facility. Amazon takes care of making copies of the data at various different it's replicated at different places so that if the, the East facility goes down or there's a huge fire, copies of my data are still available. I can get it without even thinking about it because Amazon takes care of well, that copy. Well, is the cloud as safe as they say? I mean, that if your stuff is in the cloud, you're covered. Can we believe that? Oh, well, yeah, you really can. Oh, well, it's, it's very safe. There are some minor hazards. Amazon went down in 2017 for about four hours and caused a huge problem. But I think that's four the, hours. It's the only time. It, it's not really mysterious in that everybody who uses a computer these days or even watches Netflix is using the cloud without thinking God. about it. Um, but which cloud? Now, you, you raised the image. I just thought the cloud. Right. In fact, I think I've gotten some suggestions that I switched from. I don't even know what cloud I'm on. Okay. Well, you're on, uh, do you have a Gmail account? You do. I do have a Gmail account. Then all of your Gmail is stored on the Google cloud. But I, do I also have an Amazon cloud? You probably don't. Oh. Well, you do. Do you have a Netflix account? Yes. All of your Netflix data, your, net, your movies are being streamed off the Amazon AWS cloud. So I've got... Two clouds. Oh, you have more than that. I have more than that? Yeah, you probably have more than that. You have an iPhone? Yes, I do. Then you also have data stored on the Apple iCloud. Whoa! So, so my head is in the clouds. Your head is totally in the clouds. <laughs> and, and automatically and seamlessly. But it's it's very valuable, especially for seniors, it's valuable because um, you know if you lose a device or you forget where you put it, which I do all the time, um, you can still get your information. If you sign on to your Gmail account on your computer at home, you see your email saved. And then if you sign on to it at a different computer somewhere else, you still see the same email because it's stored on the Google Cloud. Well, is, is the storage space unlimited? I mean, do... do For all intents and purposes. It, it, only by cost, because sometimes I, I get a message. Yeah, but the cost is pretty minimal. If you, if you are beginning to exceed, they'll send you... A notice saying, no, you need to upgrade your tier. And it's those tier levels that make Google and iCloud not technically meet the definition of a cloud because, you know, it's not perfectly flexible. But it's easier for us to use those services because we don't really have to think about it. Um, you know, Apple takes care of it for us. Google takes care of us for us. Um, uh, do you have uh, uh, a Word, Microsoft Word, you probably Yes, use. I do. And you probably are storing things on... Um, you know, the, the Microsoft Mic Could be. Yeah, it's OneDrive. <laughs> um, Could, yeah, uh, that's another OneDrive. What? Is that's that another, their cloud? That's the Microsoft OneDrive cloud. Is cloud. Yeah, yeah. Well, how, is it important to keep all this straight? Um, in a way, it is. It's important to consider um, cloud security. Um, data security is really important. So when you get notices from a cloud provider, Apple or Microsoft or anyone, asking you to implement what they call um, you know, an extra authentication service. Oh, MFA, yeah. something it, else to remember. You should always do that. That's very important. Um, usually it'll be a little code that shows up on your phone. That's very, very helpful because people can't just get, guess your password or steal it from another device and get your account because they have to have multi-factor means there are multiple factors of identifying who you are. So it can be something you know, like a password, something you are, like your face or your thumb uh, print, or uh, something you have, like your phone. So you have to have more than one factor to, to get into the service. So, so this security thing is on the minds of all the various cloud providers. Yeah, they know. Providers. And it is really important to do that. Um, I prefer, you know, if you, if you have a choice, that. Um, People should pick something they know, a password, and something they have, like the phone. Something you are a bit like um, face recognition that Apple does is not as secure. 
Um, you'll remember last year when uh, the attorney Eastman, uh, the former Trump attorney Eastman was arrested, the FBI agent walked up to him with his phone and said, Mr. Eastman, is this your phone? <laughs> oh, no, it opened up yeah, all yeah, his data. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That wasn't so, too smart. Well, no, it was pretty smart of the FBI <laughs> oh, agent. Oh, no, it was very smart yeah. of the FBI agent, but the but, other, he should have, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's currently, I think it's in court. I think the last I heard, the judge had ruled that that was perfectly acceptable because he just asked him if it was his phone. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it's so um, interesting about, like, like I said, you know, I had this image of the cloud as just being this very touchy-feely thing no, up a, in the stratosphere. But, I mean, it's very... It, and it's very it's very useful because it, it can prevent your data from being lost. Um, you know, if your computer is destroyed. Or now, you, that did happen to me when we had that big electrical storm that came sure, through. It I fried that. my hard drive. But you were still able to get all your... I was your, able to get all the data because it was... Right. In the cloud. That's right. It's very, very helpful to be, and be able, so you can access it from multiple locations, multiple devices. You always have access to your information. Now, now let me ask you on this password thing, because it sounds like upgrading your password. What are your thoughts about these password places where you only have to know one password and then it... Password managers. Those, password managers. Those are very good. Are actually. they? They're good. I worry about whether... Hmm. Well, they've been hacked. Last uh -oh. pass was hacked. So uh. nothing's perfect. But uh, always, if you're using multi-factor authentication, that's going to protect you. So that's, that's really important. Always enable that anytime you can. And another thing that we all have to remember with the cloud these days is we have to think about what happens... Like, None of us are ever going to die. That's not going to happen, no. of course. We'll just but go up into the cloud. We might go up into the cloud. <laughs> so if that happens, how do our children get access to our information? Ooh, that is a good topic. Because if the information is stored in a secure cloud and you have a multi-factor authentication enabled, how do they know your yeah, password is... and you have your phone and know how to get into your phone? I mean, there's a lot of... It's very, could well, be very so difficult. what do we do about that? There was a case in California where a young man, college student, uh, had a father who worked at the 7-Eleven. It was like a retired job. He's just working at the 7-Eleven. Yeah. He's not making a huge amount of money. But it turns out he had a million dollars of property, real estate. Ooh. But the, the information about that property was all stored on the cloud. Uh-oh. So he had to go through quite a bit of turmoil to get access, to get in into that data, to find out information about this property. Um, and it, it can be very difficult. Uh, you have to get a court order. You have to have the death well, certificate. How do you, how you have to you go through probate. And even then, you're not getting that. There are easy ways, and people should all consider this now. Okay, everybody, everybody who's, right who's my age, get... <laughs> Should we so, give them a minute to get out their pens and paper? Because people of my generation are still using so that's right. <laughs> pen, and, pen and ink. Pen and ink. Okay. Well, on on your iPhone, Apple has a has accounted for that. They take they have taken it into account. If you go onto your iCloud uh, ID and set up, there's an item on there. I think it's like third down on the checkbox list that says Legacy Contact. Whoa! I didn't know that. Like that. You can put in the email address and name of your legacy contact and the password, set it, and you can provide that password to who your legacy yeah. contact is so that they have it. And then they can't get your data just with that. They have to also provide Apple with your death certificate. But if they do those two things, they have access. They have access. That is a great it, It's just an tip. easier way to do it. Now, you can also go you know, to um, probate court and... But it can take months and months. No, you, you don't want to do that. This is a, uh, it's a, a, a data blocker for a phone charger. And what that's for is it prevents what they call juice jacking. And juice jack. What that is, is with your phone, they now have just one port. So there's the charge port, which is also a data port. And when you plug that in, you're charging your phone. If you're in an airport or somewhere, you plug your phone in. Oh, they they've, can, had, they've had trouble with that yeah, at airports. Yeah, they can. It can be a fake charger, and they can actually download information from your phone or access oh that information. Gosh. So what this does, this little device, you plug your USB port into that, plug this into the the thing at the airport, and it prevents anything but power. So it blocks everything except power. 
from getting to your phone. So it's kind of a handy little device to have. Now, They're very inexpensive. You, you can have this one. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, this has been so informative, John. And I am the type of person who, you know, I, when I ask people to explain something, a lot of people say, I'll just go to YouTube. That does not work for me. I like the one-on-one -on -one explanations well, then people. Uh, you can post this video to YouTube and then people can say, just go to YouTube. I, that's right. Yeah. If I can tell, go yeah. to YouTube. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank for, you. And this um, is wonderful. And this series of, of uh, videos is wonderful. I've been watching them for a year now. They're just wonderful. We have some pretty amazing people in Jefferson County. We do indeed. It's a great place to live, a great place to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.